What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Kavaris. Today, we are going to be talking about all of the weapon series that are available in Kavaris, including some that we weren't told about, but are going to break the game. So let's go ahead and get right into it right away. I ain't going to waste any more of your time. The first weapon series we are going to talk about is the Evil Eclipse series. How you attain this is by using the Kavaris Expedition prep tickets that you earned playing before the Kavaris region. So if you're watching this video after Kavaris is released, you may not have these tickets. This isn't acquirable. But for everybody that can exchange for these weapon series, it is a 471 attack weapon series at level 50. The damage variance is 75% to 100% and it is equipable at level 40. It has an item potential called Elusive Unit and at level 4 it provides 22% potency, 100% natural PP recovery speed for 20 seconds on a successful sidestep. The first droppable weapon series you will see in the Kavaris region is called the Sectal series, and this has 475 attack at level 50, 75 to 100% damage variance, and requires level 45 to equip. This item potential is called Trample Unit, and at level 4 provides 22% potency and an additional 6% potency against enemies that are not bosses. One thing I want to remind everybody here is that every single weapon series has every single weapon available to them which is a huge quality of life improvement, so all multi-weapon options are available to you. Next, let's talk about the Rocks series. This has 478 attack at level 50, 75 to 100% damage variance, and requires level 52 to equip. Now, very similar to the Relic series that we had in Retemp, the Rocks series has three different item potentials that you can have on them, depending on the weapon that you are using within the series. So the first item potential is called Staccato Unit, it is the potential for any of the purple colored rock series weapons. It gives 23% potency at level 4. Offensive PP recovery is increased by 20% for 5 seconds when landing an attack, and landing an additional attack will extend that duration. The next item potential is available on these reddish colored looking rock series weapons. That item potential is called Revolutionary Unit, and at level 4 it provides 24% potency and 20% PP recovery when you take damage. The third item potential is for these bluish colored rock series weapons, and that item potential is called Desperation Unit at level 4, provides 18% potency and 30% critical hit rate when your PP is below 50%. And now one huge surprise that we got in game is the inclusion of 7 star rarity weapons. I'm showing you in game, I have footage of one of these dropping and being posted in the market. This weapon series is called the Rugged series and it has 676 attack power. That is almost 200 more than any of the six star weapon series that we have in the game. That is a huge power spike. I know for a fact that this Talus and the Katana dropped from the AMS Vera UQ. I don't have any information on the Crocodilus UQ and if that dropped one, but we know for a fact that UQs drop this rugged seven star series. As I said earlier, this series has 676 attack at level 50. One significant thing is that the damage variance is 50% to 100%. So that is one big difference between any other weapon series we've, ex we've observed and the rugged series, and it will require you to be level 57 to equip this series. Now, similarly to the rock series and the relic series, this rugged series also has three unique item potentials depending on the weapon you are equipped with. This first one for the reddish colored rugged series weapons is called gyrating unit at level four provides 25% potency and 30% PP consumption reduction for 20 seconds when you consume 300 PP. For the rugged weapons that are grayish with these yellow undertones, their item potential is called Citadel Unit. At level 4, provides 25% potency and generates up to 3 damage resistance 40% barriers. These barriers have a cooldown of 30 seconds, and that cooldown is reduced by 2 seconds per enemy destroyed. And the final item potential is for these grayish weapons with some yellow undertones, as well as a few blue ones. So they look pretty similar, but the blue is the giveaway. These have an item potential called Pursuit Unit, and at level 4 provides 19% potency, and a follow-up attack will occur up to 3 times when you hit an enemy, and that has a 5 second cooldown. So now let's go ahead and dive into some of the damage calculations and see where which weapon series have value compared to others. So just to clarify, I am using the attack stat from a level 60 fighter. You can find that information on the NGS Verification Data Storage Google Doc, I will link that down below. I am also using the enemy defense of a level 64 Gigantics. You can find that information in the Bestiary Google Doc, which I will also link down below as well. 
On top of that, I am using the new Belgrin armors. They have 2.75% potency, and I am using our highest raw damage setup of capsules. And here is all of the damage of every six star weapon that we have in the Kavaris region. I'm going to shade some of the evil eclipse cells since we can only get a level one attack or a clean one from the exchange. And the first thing I want to do is compare the evil eclipse to the sectal series since the sectal series is going to be the most acquirable weapon right when you get into Kavaris. And you'll notice that there are actually two different rows. That sectal plus row is indicating how much damage you would do to a non boss enemy since you're getting that additional 6% potency. So you'll notice if we are attacking into a boss, the Sectal series is stronger, especially if you can get into a Fixa attack or Fixa Fatale 1 or higher. From that point on, you are going to be stronger than what the Evil Eclipse can offer. And obviously, if you are attacking into regular enemies, the Sectal series is one of the best weapon series for farming. So the Sectal series has a lot of value if you are looking for a weapon to go do mob grinding. Now, if we were to compare the clean stats of the Sectal series to the Rock series, you can see that there is a significant increase immediately into a clean rocks weapon. And down below, I have all of the item potentials of the three of the rock series. So you know exactly which rows are giving you what power for the sectal series to outperform a clean rocks weapon series. You would need a fix of attack one or a fix of fatale two or higher to compete with some of these clean rocks. So the rocks do have value even as a clean weapon where you're going to get most of the rocks value is out of these item potentials. And just like in Rotem, we had the crit item potential that made Termina the best in slot fixa for that weapon. In Kavaris, we have the same exact thing happening here. The rock series with that crit item potential is by far the strongest weapon that we have for all of the six star weapons, if you can get one with Termina. So once again, we have all three fixas being relevant depending on what weapon and what item potential you have on that weapon. And last but not least, let's introduce this seven star rugged series with that 200 additional attack just to see how much stronger they are. Here's those item potentials down below again. They are galaxies ahead in terms of damage. Now, one thing I do want to remind you all of is that the pursuit unit, we don't know the exact potency of those follow up attacks. So that damage isn't added into this data sheet here. So although the Citadel and gyrating unit row shows a lot more damage, it's most likely going to be the case that the pursuit unit item potential is going to be stronger in a single target situation. Having follow up attacks every five seconds is going to provide a huge DPS boost regardless of what weapon it is on. But as I was making this video, I really started to wonder, since we have more variants in the rugged weapon series, is there going to be a better way to augment these weapons? We've always had that luxury of having a 75 to 100% variance weapon. And now that we have that 50 to 100% weapon, floor potency may be even more important. So right here, what you are seeing is down below, you're seeing that same damage that we had from the original data sheet using the highest raw damage augment build that we've been using in the game. And above, you are seeing the stats of using the Rugged Weapon series with a Boss Soul or Gigastat 3, a Mastery 4, Addy Deft, Alt Secret at 3, and Deft Stat Capsule lineup. So essentially what we are doing here is replacing either Boss Soul or Gigastat 3 with Alt Secreta, and that's giving us more floor potency overall in our build. And you'll see here that that is actually improving the damage that the Rugged series does. A big reason for why we are seeing this damage difference is because you are affecting more of the variance while losing only a little bit of potency. One interesting thing to point out here as well is Fixa Fatale is actually the highest damage instead of Fixa Attack, which is typically the case. A big reason for that is because of that low variance. The more you can crit, you are completely ignoring variance and potency is taking over as the most important stat. However, since Fatale is only affecting 10 to 15% of crit chance, you are still not critting a lot and variance is still going to play a big role in your damage. So some of my final takeaways as for the Kavaris weapons, I do think the Rock series is going to be just fine for all content that we see right now. However, seeing seven star gear already in the Kavaris region leaves me a bit hesitant to invest any significant money into any weapons. I personally will be using the Evil Eclipse weapon series for my force build, and I will probably go into a clean or fix a one sectal spear for my partisan build and leave it at that. Unless these ancients that we are seeing next week are very tough, any six star weapon is going to be serviceable enough to defeat those enemies. 
another thing to consider is that we do know we are getting account locked exchangeable weapons and units some point in the future we could see that as early as next week but it could be a month or two down the road but if we're already seeing seven star weapons in the game it's most likely that we will see an exchangeable seven star in the future so don't go hyper investing into a six star weapon when we might be leaving the six star meta by next month and that's that guys Go ahead and leave a like and a comment down below. How do you feel about some of these weapon series and their item potentials? And do you think the seven star rugged series being in the game already is a good thing or a bad thing for our game? As always, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe. It helps the channel a bunch. And until next time, guys, I'll see you all real soon.